In the last lecture, we learned about template reference variable in Angular and we learned that a template reference variable is a variable which stores a reference to a DOM element, component or a directive on which we have used it. Now, in the last lecture, we saw how we can use a template reference variable on an HTML element. In this lecture, let's learn how we can use a template reference variable on a component. Now, keep in mind that we can also use a template reference variable on a directive. But since we have not talked about creating a custom directive yet, that's why I'm not going to cover that part. We will cover it in the future lectures of this course. But for now, let's go ahead and let's learn how we can use a template reference variable on a component. So what I want to do is, whenever a user clicks on this product, we want to display the details of that product. So whenever any one of these products is clicked, that product should be selected and the details of that product should be displayed. To achieve this, we are going to make use of template reference variable. Now we are displaying this product list from our product list component. So let's open product list component for that. Let's go to the source folder, then app folder. In there, we have this container folder and in there we have our product list component. So let's go ahead and let's open this product list component.ts. And in here, let's go ahead and let's create a property called selected product. So here, I think we are not using this property anywhere. Let me check its references. All right, so I think we are not using this property anywhere. So I'll go ahead and I'll rename this property as selected product instead of calling it current product. And in this selected product, we want to store that product which the user has clicked. Okay. Now, before we do anything else, what I want to do is I want to create a model class for our products. So for that, inside this app folder, I'll create a new folder. I'll simply call it models. And inside this models, let's go ahead and let's create a new file. And I'm going to call this file as product.ts. It is going to be a TypeScript file. And in here, let's go ahead and let's create a class. And let's call this class product. And we want to use this class outside of this file. So let's also go ahead and let's export it so that we can import it in other files. Now inside this product class, I want to have some properties. Now, if I go to this product component, so here we have a product component and in there, if you go to this product.ts, there, when we are creating this product property to that, we are assigning this anonymous object. And in that anonymous object, we have specified some properties. So these are the same properties which we want in our product class. So I'll copy these properties from here. Let's go to product.ts and let's paste it here. So these are the properties which we want for our product class. And here, instead of comma, we need to use semicolon. So let me go ahead and let me do it for all the properties. All right, let's save this file. And now let's go ahead and let's use this product class. So first we want to use it inside this product component.ts file. So here what we will do is first we will import that class. For that we can use this import statement and there we can specify the class name which is product from and then let's specify the path of the product. So from the current directory. So basically currently we are in the product folder. From here we want to move one folder up in this way. We will reach to this product list folder from that product list folder. We want to move one folder up. Now we are in the container folder from there. We want to move one folder up. Now we are in the app folder and from the app folder. We want to go to this models folder and from the models folder. We want to go to this product file. Okay. So now we should have access to this product class. Now let's go ahead and let's specify the type of this product property here as product okay so this product property is of type product class and let's go ahead and let's do the same thing in our product list component so let me close this product component here let's go to product list component and there also let's specify the type of the selected product as product so again we need to import product from let's specify the path so from the current directory from this product list folder we want to move one folder up to the container folder. From there, we want to move one folder up to the app folder. In there, we have our models folder. And in there, we have our product file. 
and now let's go ahead and let's specify the type of this selected product as product all right so what we have done is inside this product list component we have created a new property called selected product and its type is product class now what we want is whenever any one of these products is clicked in the web page we want to assign that product to this selected product property for that let's go to the html file of this product list component and let me also close this product.ts and product component.ts and for each product this div is getting generated right so on this div we are going to bind the click event and to bind an event we need to wrap it within parenthesis and whenever the click event happens on this div element what we want to do is we want to set selected product to that product and that product we have inside this prod variable so let's assign that prod to this selected product okay so whenever any one of these products will be clicked that product will be assigned to this selected product property and now what we want to do is once we have the selected product we want to display the details of that product in the web page for that we are going to create a new component and we are going to create that component inside this container component inside this container folder so for that let's go to terminal and let's open a new terminal here and let me delete the first one now what we want to do is here first we want to move to the container folder for that we will use this cd command so from the source folder we want to go to the app folder from the app folder we want to go to the container folder and now we are in the container folder let me clear the terminal and let's type ng generate command and here we want to generate a component and we want to call this component product detail let's press enter so now that component should be created here you can see we have that product detail component let's open this product detail folder and as usual from here let's first remove this spec.ts file all right let's go to product detail component.ts and in there we have our selector which is called as app product detail let's remove this app from here so we want the selector to be product detail and let's go ahead and let's use this product detail selector in the html file of container component so let's open the html file of this container component and in there after this product list component let's go ahead and let's use this product detail component okay all right here we have our product detail component.ts for now let's close this file let's go ahead and let's also close this product list component.html and let's also close this product list component.ts now from this component we are going to use this selected product okay so let's close this and now we have created our product detail component let's go ahead and let's add some html and css for that product detail component so let's open this product detail component.html and instead of displaying this paragraph let's add some html and in order to save some time i have already written some html so let me grab it from here let's go ahead and let's paste it inside our product detail component.html and don't worry i will share this html code with you through my github repo okay let's save this file and in order to design this html i have also written some css so let's go ahead and let's grab that css let's copy it from here again i will share this css with you let's go back to vs code let's open product detail component.css and let's paste the css here okay with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's see how the product detail components look this is how the product details component will be displayed okay in here we are displaying all the details of that particular product now here we have some hard coded value but we are going to change it here we will display only the details of that product which the user has selected which the user has clicked on but for now what i want is initially when the page loads and when no product is selected when no product is clicked on in that case we don't want to display this product detail component currently what is happening is if we reload the page with the initial load only this component is being displayed with some dummy data but we don't want that when the page loads for the first time this product detail component should not be displayed for that let's go to vs code 
let's close this CSS file here. Let's also close this HTML file. And here we are using this product detail component. Now we don't want to display this product detail component when there is no product selected. For that, first of all, we are going to use ng if directive. And to this, we will pass a condition that if there is no product selected, in that case, we will not display this product detail component. For that, we need access to this selected product property of this product list component. Now, if you notice here, this product list component and this product detail component, these are the sibling components. They do not have a parent child relationship. So one way to achieve this is we will pass the data from the product list component to the container component using event binding. And from the container component, we will pass down that data to the product detail component using property binding. Or what we can also do is we can use template reference variable on this product list component. And then we can use that template reference variable to access this selected product property. Let's actually see that. So what we will do is on this product list component, we will use a template reference variable and let's simply call it product list component. You can name it anything, but I just want to give it a meaningful name so that we will understand what this template reference variable is going to store. That's why I'm calling it product list component. And this product list component, it is going to store a reference to an instance of this product list component class. Okay, and in that class we have this property. So we can now access that property using this template reference variable. So here we can say we can use this variable and this variable it is going to have a selected product property. Right. This reference variable here, it will store a reference to an instance of this product list component class. And in that instance, we will have this property selected product. So we are trying to access that property. Now, if that property is undefined, that means if there is no selected product, the user has not clicked on any product in the web page. In that case, this selected property will be undefined because if you notice, initially we are not assigning any value to it. So initially it will be undefined. And when it is undefined, we don't want to display this product detail component in the web page. But if the user has selected some product, that means if the user has clicked on some product, in that case, the selected product will not be undefined. It will be assigned with the product object. In that case, this product detail component will be displayed. Let's actually see that. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you see, initially that product detail component is not displayed. But if I click on any one of these products, in that case, it is being displayed. Now, currently this cross button is not working. So I'll have to refresh the page. And if I select some other product, you see, again, that product detail component has been displayed. So in this way, using template reference variable, we are able to access this selected product property of this product list component. On this product list component, we have used a template reference variable. And with the help of that template reference variable, we are able to access its property. Now, somehow we need to pass this selected product property to the component class of this product detail. So here we have this product detail component. In here, let's say we want to have a property called product. It is going to be of type product. Okay, and let's go ahead and let's import it from this file. And to this, we want to assign this selected product. Let's see how we can achieve that in our next lecture. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.